So, you've built yourself up an army and now you want to go out and burn some castles down. Great! This is a war game after all, so attacking other players is part of that fun. But, before you go off attacking random castles all willy-nilly and killing off your troops as fast as you can recruit them, there's a few things you should know that can help your attacks be more successful. It's true. In a lot of other games, you can easily attack a castle the same level as yours and win with the right troop and gear setup. This is not always the case in War and Order. Doing a solo attack on a castle the same level as yours, or even one level lower, could result in defeat and massive troop losses if they have all their troops stationed in their castle. This is because, one, all of the troops that are actively in that castle will join the fight against your army, and two, they have the added benefit of defense golems. If you're new to attacking and planning on going it alone, your better option is to target a castle a few levels lower than yours. Since this game does favor the defender and an attack can cost you a fair amount of troops, you want to make sure the rewards justify that cost. It's always a good idea to scout your target first to make sure that they have a decent amount of resources for you to plunder. It will also tell you what troops the enemy has waiting for you. And be sure to keep your watchtower upgraded so that you can get more detailed scout reports. In player versus player combat, you can end up with a lot of dead troops. This is different than when you're attacking monsters and all of your casualties end up wounded in your hospital. So before you go out attacking other players, you should focus on minimizing that troop loss. And you can do this by increasing your wounded conversion rate. This is what's going to determine how many of your troops end up wounded when you're attacking and how many of them end up dying. To do this, you'll want to research wounded conversion under the development tab in the college and equip any Lord equipment and passive B skills that can give you increases for wounded conversion rates. As mentioned earlier, there are several different equipable items in this game that can give you bonuses to help make your attack more successful. In addition to the bonuses to minimize dead troops, you'll also want to make sure that you have equipment, achievement badges, emblems, artifacts, zodiacs, and passive B skills equipped or activated that can increase your troop stats for attack, defense, and HP. There are also several usable buff items found in the war tab of your pack that can help give you a boost too. But these items are sometimes hard to come by, so use them wisely. Personally, I usually save them for events like Elite Adventures, Elite Wars, and KE. How you set up your marching army can make or break your attack. I already covered this in detail in my army composition video, so I won't go over it again now, but you can check that video out when we're done here. Sending your beast to attack another castle costs a whopping 30 stamina, and the beast vigor item to restore that stamina is pretty rare, so you can't count on always being able to replenish it. It is best to only send your beast on the first wave of attacks to help clear out the enemy troops, then send marches without your beast after that to keep plundering resources. Cavalry have a much larger load capacity than any other troop type, but they aren't the best in player versus player combat. So you're better off sending them after your first wave attack clears out most of your enemy's defenses. You will still want to send a single odd tiered and a single even tiered cavalry just to give your opponent more targets to have to defeat. If you find a nice juicy target with a lot of resources, but also a lot of troops, 
try asking some of your fellow Alliance members for help taking those troops out. You can either set a rally that other players can join, or you can use the timed attack method for a quicker attack. You can check out my timed attack video for step-by-step -step instructions on how to pull this off. If your target belongs to an alliance, there's a chance some of their teammates may send reinforcements to help defend that castle. If you see a bunch of reinforcements pouring in, you may want to play it safe and recall your attack. Now, combat is a huge topic in War and Order, and there's much more to it than what I've covered here. But if you're new to the game or just new to venturing out to light some fires, these basic tips are a good start to get you going. Bam!